Hello folks, welcome back. Kind of a very melancholy day. Um, very weird, very weird, weird Wednesday. Tomorrow's gonna suck. Actually, tonight's not gonna be too bad, because I'm gonna get some sleep, because I went to the gym early, so I'm kind of happy. But, I have some sad news again. Um, unless you've been hiding under a rock, or in a cave, or you're still in, like, COVID-19 seclusion. Um, another great one passed, passed on the great rock and roll temple in the sky, Eddie Van Halen, true prince among men. Sorry to see you go. Quick little tribute to the man who actually brought the guitar sounds to David Lee Roth. With that being said, and that's out of the way, let's try and cheer up. Even though I'm going to move some stuff around, I'm going to get some stuff done, and I'm going to get to sleep. Actually get a decent night, night of sleep for a rare change. But before you can talk to me, I'm getting there. I'm just happy it's... Oh, shoot, I have to go check that, too. <laughs> I have to do so much still. So much. That's okay. But, again, things I do have to do. I have to thank a whole bunch of people for interacting with me. Soup! Yes, sir. You won, actually, twice. Because you got that six count. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ah, man, my body knows that I'm going to get to sleep early, too. 
and Eho Del Smart Jr. You, sir, can take your comments. Well, but you can get tossed. Oh, Alberto El Obero. You, sir, can just walk out of here. major case of the yawns and the mid card act you sir have a very dirty mind because you just told Nikki Cross to take it all off So let's start the show. Um, this was an AEW, 30 years of Chris Jericho. Wow. Chris Jericho was born before me. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I'm 44. 30 minus that's 14. Probably started when he was 18. Wow, I'm only, I'm only like four or five years old, younger. Than Chris Jericho? Indeed. Yep, so it's 30 years of Chris Jericho. So, so throughout the show, at random points, various people, such as Tanahashi. I'm kind of impressed that they brought some people from New Japan in to wish Jericho congratulations on 30 years. In the 30 years of Jericho! Uh, so it's all. Uh, Team Taz is on commentary. Taz, Taz is one of the best commentators next to Chris Jericho. Just get, get rid of Excalibur. Leave Taz there. Taz is the best because it was Will Hobbs versus Brian Cage. I'll tell you what, this was a great opening match. It starts off, they just they says fight. It's a fight. Fighters ready, fight. And you say, fight, perfect. You just start brawling. Yay, boo. Yay, Booze. Um, neither of them can suplex the other. They're each too big, too strong. The big chops by Brian Cage, and then he does that that kind of arm drag into a rolling basement drop kick. Again, shows off his athleticism for a big man. That's really amazing. Will Hobbs, however, is no slouch. Um, however, he does get standing ragdolled by by Brian Cage, and then to follow that, Cage hit a standing moonsault. I don't know how he does it. If I tried to do that standing moonsault, I, again, I would fall on my head and kill myself. Then Hobbs eventually comes back a little bit, does a backdrop onto Cage, and the flying shoulder tackle that looks amazing. And I'll tell you what, he had a great looking power slam. Both of these two, both Cage and Hobbs, they're the hoss. But they're just not the classic NWA Haas where it's like brawlerish, very, very ugly fight. So be, be, between these two, it's a very technical match. Um, again, there's, there's aspects of having that big Haas feel, but yet they would do things that again, a big guy, someone six foot six, solid, like 300 pounds, solid muscle. Uh, Will Hobbs is a little softer, but not by much. 
I mean, they're doing like standing moonsaults. Whoa. Cannot see that happening. A cage eventually hit a pump handle driver, which looked vicious. Um, it was a standing switch into the German suplex then. Uh, Hobbs. Again. Gets German suplex. So right off that one, uh, Hobbs still his own German suplex. He pops up. They double closing each other. They go to break. Good time to take a break. It's good to let them catch their breath. Um, more yay boos when you come back. Hobbs is Hobbs has a up. Oh no. I'm warming up to Hobbs' spine buster. That's pretty good looking. Even though Arn Anderson delivered one later, which I'll talk about. Again, good looking spine buster though. Top 10 spine buster for sure. And Arn Anderson, Bobby Roode, Carl Anderson. Maybe Will Hobbs is me. Maybe he's that that he maybe he's that Mount Rushmore of spine busters. Hmm. Actually, I probably does put him in the top five. Bobby Lashley has a pretty good looking. Uh, he he's known for the spear though. That's okay. He's a good look. Uh, Hobbs Will Hobbs has a great looking spine buster. Um, he misses the big splash that allows Cage to hit the drill drill claw. They beat him up a little bit. <laughs> Brian Cage retains the FTW Championship. This was a fun match overall. I, I besides being a little too physical and the yay boos a little too much, this is still a, and very little storytelling. Just saying these are two big guys. Uh, Taz comes out, yeah, I respect you, but yeah, we're still better. This was still a really good surf and turf match. Then, of course, we go to commercial and uh, Tanahashi, a bunch of others. The bunch of well wishers for Chris Jericho. I just saw Tanahashi. Whoa. Go Ace. Then we have FTR versus the Hybrid 2. Hybrid 2, of course, Jack Evans and, and Halico. I hate the fact that they're using Jack Evans and in Halico, even though they look good in this match. They're just honestly used as jobbers. They could do so much more with them. They just. Seem to choose not to. It was, I don't know, weird. Again, if you see a Jack Evans match in Lucha Underground, that was, they were some of the best matches he's probably ever had. Being that pro wrestling gorilla, he is so capable. He is probably one of the best trash talkers in the ring, and he can back it up, but they don't do anything with him, which blows my mind. Now they start off, you get into a little, little uh, classic wrestling action, then Tully gets involved. Um, with that, he's enough of a distraction where one of... I, I I still hated the fact that they switched the names. I think I Cash is a bald guy. I forget what the other guy's name is, though. Uh, Cash Wheeler. Something Dawson. Uh, one of them hit the Dragon screw, screw Leg Whip, which is what they really focused on. They began to really work over Jack Evans' leg. They took... They dragged him from the ring, wrapped his leg around the post... Classic heel tactic. I do like that though. On the step over toe hold. Again, another dragon screw leg whip. Just just really working over the knee, the tendons, the muscle, the sinew of Evans' knee. Again, if he can't stand, he ain't gonna fly. So that does make sense. It's good wrestling knowledge. Yes, good wrestling knowledge in a pro wrestling match. And Helico, he comes in, he has the Lavajeo style of lucha wrestling, uh, more of the submission. Um, he gets both FTR members into kind of a modified Moodle lock, like STO Moodle lock for both of them. It's kind of weird, but again, and how it goes long and lanky, he can do that stuff. Uh, Tully pushes the ropes, that allows FTR to get the rope break, um, the hybrid two. Then they start doing their, their combo moves. Their combo moves are so smooth. Again, I still have no idea why they don't utilize Jack Evans and Helico more and better. I mean, they could have them win a couple of matches against like the jobber teams. Like, um, oh, Dungeons and Dragons guy and uh, Peter Avalon. They could have them beat them all the time on Dark. I don't think they've even had a match. I mean, they could have a really, they could win a really good competitive match against Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss. 
And that would make sense. No one would be truly offended by that. Or you can just like throw in like um, a jobbers and like like true jobbers, local local enhancement. Toss them a bone, please. Um, and then from there, again, because they did the stomp backdrop combo, which is so good. Um, and then hit an, another assisted 450 when Helico flipped Jack Evans and he hit the 450 splash. And then this, then the whole focus was they want F, th this kind of didn't make sense. FTR wanted to focus on the wounded one, the bad leg of Jack Evans. So every time they had a chance, they would take Ann Hel Helico out, get him on the ring, and then they work over Jack Evans more. Almost good ring psychology. Actually, it is good ring psychology. What am I saying? Again, it's a great way to do that. Again, the German suplex or the dragon suplex by the one and Helico gets in after he breaks with a pin, he gets pushed back outside. Jack even tries, but he's really sell selling that knee. And he did make a couple of good comebacks. Um, again, however, go he tried that spinning leg drop. And when he did his moves, he looked so gimpy. He sold it so well. It's like, yeah, climbing up, the, climbing up to the top rope. It's, it's a little intimidating, but when you're in a bad wheel, like he is, again, it makes it that much harder. Uh, he had a moonsault, but again, it didn't look like he got all of it. I'll tell you what, he almost, he almost nailed poor poor whoever it was right, right in the nose with his heel off that spinning leg drop. It looks like he kind of misjudged it. Even the announcer says, well, it looks like he grazed him with that. And again, um... I forget if they're live today or if they, it was a couple more weeks. But I know Jacksonville, for the most part today, it was kind of comfortable. It was warm, but it wasn't too humid. I think all the rain got out. So it all depends. Jacksonville, you have like semi closed buildings, weird stuff happens with the condensation. Um, then you have the Tiger Driver, which was, again, good to see. But then FTR. Not known for being flippy, but knowing not known for being flippy, but they're known for their fists. Did a suplex splash combination and got the win. And I'll tell you what, it was a good match, good solid match. Uh, Tull, uh, Tully got involved just enough to make it interesting, save the team when he needed to. FCR did enough. Again, my only problem is that they just like continue to bury Jack Evans. And then Helico, even they make they make them look so good. And while I really do have to clean up my file because now it's getting really splashy. But um, yeah, overall a surf and surf match though. Then we get uh, the best friends come out, um, talk trash, FTR, whatever. MJF talks a little bit about Jericho. Shaquille talks about Jericho. Gene Simmons, Don Callis, Lars Alsrich from Metallica, as well as DDP come out. They all wish, again, congratulations to Chris Jericho. And then for the dog color match, uh, we have Cody Rhodes and Brody Lee for the AEW champion. And they show, in the stands, Greg the Hammer Valentine sitting all by himself. I was shocked. I honestly thought, Greg the Hammer Valentine passed away years ago. He looks in decent shape for always being that kind of fat southern guy you'd find in a bar. Again, he, he was that classical NWA guy who looks like he just sat at a bar, drank, and wanted to get into a fist fight and turn that fist fight into a pool cue breaking contest. So again, Greg the Hammer Valentine was there. He didn't wear a mask. He was just there by himself. He's like, like he's just like, yeah, whatever. Like I can't. It was like you. They for the bill. I'm here. So it's Cody Rhodes and Brody Lee in a dog collar match. Dog collar comes to play in pretty early by Lee, but he misses some shots on Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes um, gets goes face first. Gets dropped face first into the ring. Uh, Lee closed then then. Then it really, then the chain really gets involved. Brody clotheslines Cody Rhodes with the chain. Um, then Cody Rhodes gets a little color. My boy, the bleeding again. You got some color. 
I couldn't tell if it was real or fake because by the end of the match, he cleaned up really well. And that always leaves me to think. I'm like, wait a second. I don't know. About, I don't know about this. But yeah. Um, uh, Silver gets involved. Uh, he gets, he's told to sit on a chair. And uh, he whips Cody. He whips. You know, he whips Cody. Cody Rhodes into him. Um, and then Cody starts to use the chain. Uh, he takes the chain to the groin of Lee, which has to hurt. Then a chain assisted side Russian leg sweep. Lee goes out to get the table again. From there, Cody Rhodes is a smart. He pulls Lee down with a chain. It's a chain assist cutter. Um, and then Lee's then Brody Lee's all busted open. So this was kind of your classic NWA dog collar match where everyone just gets busted up. Everyone starts bleeding. Everyone looks like a face looks like a stuffed pig. The only thing. If you are going to juice, you need to have the blonde hair. Because when you have the black hair, the blood kind of fades into it. I mean, the thing that you imagine with, woo, Ric Flair, he would wear the crimson mask and the blood would get all over. And the blood looked like it was seeping to the back of his head, mainly because of his, his amazingly bleach blonde hair. And, and he could almost like, bleed and, and juice on command. Uh, he didn't even need a blade. He would just focus and blood would start, start running from his forehead. Woo! So, yeah. Um, then Cody again used, used the chain. He, then he starts whipping the back of, of Brody Lee. Very classic Cody style. Um, Arn gets in the ring. Some uh, the other Dark Order skinny guy comes in, eats a spine buster. Uh, Arn didn't eat any chain. He just kind of got shoved aside by Brody Lee. Then Cody takes that chain and starts to wrap it around his wrist. I think that should have been the end of the match because that's just like getting hit with some brass knuckles. And that is very traditionally the end of a lot of matches. Not this one, no. So then he punches Brody Lee in the face with that wrapped, wrapped knuckle. He hits some moonsault. Uh, goes for a crossroads. Brody Lee kicks out of one. Looks absolutely furious. Um, Lee hits a superplex. Uh, chain. And then back to the chain. Cody wraps that chain for his comeback around the mouth. And then around the eyes of Brody Lee. And just starts hitting that chain. Oh, with elbows and, and punches, driving the, that that metal into the teeth and the eyes of Brody Lee. And then finally, with that chain all wrapped around his head, Brody Lee eats a crossroads from Cody Rhodes. And Cody Rhodes, myth his daddy proud. My boy, so color. He made the other guy so color. We got a little juice going. I think even... That John Silver even did a blade job. And he just did that blade job to impress that beautiful buxom blonde Anna J. Yeah, that sweet sugar pumpkin. He just wanted to impress her a little bit. So even he did the blade job. Um, yeah, so Cody Rhodes wins. He cuts the promo afterwards saying he's here and he's here to stay. Good match. Again, it really reminded me of like those old NWA kind of blood feud matches. A good and, and this had, again, Brody Lee did take him out. Cody maybe came back too soon, but that's okay. This was still a good surf and turf match. And Kenny Omega comes out, does a promo. Um, they do a little bit more about their tournament to crown the next contender for the heavyweight championship. Then we have the women's match. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't good. I mean, it seemed like I could have had this match and you could have gotten the same results. Um, there was nothing spectacular about it. A basic drab wrestling match. Even though Serena uh, Deeb's really good, Big Swole probably 
got a little bit of that rub. I think, I think Serena kind of carried her a little bit. It started off really as a good technical match. I could put on a good technical match. That's not that hard to do to begin with. Then they do the Greco-Roman knuckle lock against something else I could do. Um, and, then, and then I don't know what happened. But Serena Deeb went to go hit Big Swole. Big Swole mistimed something. Because I swear, it looked like Serena Deeb's chin like nailed Big Swole right on the nose. So it was just like a weird timing thing. Again, if you want weird timing things, I am the master of weird timing things. Then we saw more of the Dragon Screw leg whip. Like we didn't see enough of it from the FTR match. Again, Dragon Screw, Dragon Screw leg whip in the ropes. The neck breaker in the ropes that Big Soul ate as delivered by Serena Deeb. She actually got a lot of offense in. Uh, then Big Soul hit like that headbutt to the heart. That shit didn't hurt. That's like a headbutt to the boobies. That should just be like annoying. Uh, Swole rolled up Serena Deeb. Then Serena Deeb tried to backslide. They trade European uppercuts off the roof. Big Swole hit her roaring elbow. <sighs> Match was over. Meh. It's a ham sandwich. See if I can get this done in four minutes now. Uh, then Moxie came out, cut his promo. He's back in the desert of Nevada. He misses his wife. Nothing's wrong with that. Uh, then we have Chris Jericho and Jake Hager taking on Luther and Serpentico. Uh, Serpentico kind of starts in. Starts hitting the head scissors on Jericho. Jericho does a lot of selling. For this being his celebratory 30th year in wrestling match. He also chose some really tough opponents too. Because Serpentico again hit two, two flying head scissors, two head scissors on Jericho. Um, Luther then gets tagged in. Starts his power move. Serpentico. Again, when he got tagged back in by Luther, he got stuck in that standing vertical delayed suplex by Chris Jericho. Um, and then... Yeah, yeah, Serpentico gets beat up a little bit. They, they go the... Uh, then they go the outside. And this is where I can see Jim Cornette's critique of wrestlers because they all gather around in a big, big area. They already sit there and wait. Serpentico does a splash. And then Luther, very timidly, like he forgot how high that set that, that top rope was. Very timidly walked up to the top rope that is sent on. Like, and that looks something like like I would do like the first time. It's like, oh wow, that's a long way down. But um yeah, so he come back, he goes back to the top rope, hits that King Kong knee drop onto the chest of Jericho. Uh, there's no Judas effect yet. Uh, he also walks the top rope and does a fit and face plants Chris Jericho. Jake Hagar got beat up a little bit. Jake Hagar really didn't focus much in this match. It was more like Chris Jericho taking on, on these two guys, mainly Luther. Uh, Sir Pentico did, did a flying meteora. As Luther held up Chris Jericho. That looked absolutely amazing though. Um, Luther is he getting, getting, getting swings. But misses. Chris Jericho has the, has the the Judas effect, man. And Chris Jericho and Jake Hagar pick up the win. Meh. It had its moments, but again, Luther looked very amateurish. His eyes got big as he saw how high he was up. Uh, I don't know. Something was missing in this match. It was a ham sandwich. Then MJF comes out. He has a gift for Jericho. There's a clown. He gives, a, he gives Chris Jericho like a painting of himself. Chris Jericho smashes the painting over the clown. He and MJF have a stare and say, yeah, buddy. Um, then all the heels come out and celebrate. Um, Britt Baker was there with the bubble, a little bit of the bubble. Uh, Rebby was there. I don't know who that red-haired wrestler woman is on the outside. She's hot. But, um, hey, I'm single, too. 
But yeah, with all that being said, it was a good, it was a, it was a decent showing. Um, it seemed to go really fast, mainly because of the first couple of matches. They, you were all invested in them. Then by the time the women's match came around, you're like, meh. So you know what? This was this was a good cheeseburger of a dynamite. Then there's one more show for me to go this week. So I'm off tomorrow. Then Friday I come back for my SmackDown review. But I finally get to Tranquilo. So good it'll so good it will be to Tranquilo. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Oh, and Tralala. Um, the reason why I didn't mention you is because you're being built into the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League prime this weekend. And you'll be featured sometime in the Havoc of Halloween. With all that being said, everyone have a good night. I can get this done and go to sleep. Maybe do something else. But I'm going to get to sleep soon. Bye.